so uh, thank you, Jeremy, for joining joining me here today. Uh, please introduce yourself and uh, let's get into learning a little bit more about how to optimize your SOC operations with some of the workbooks that uh, you worked on. Over to you. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Uh, so my name is Jeremy Tan. Um, I am a um, senior product manager with the Microsoft Sentinel uh, engineering team. So to be more specific, um, I'm part of the team for customer experience engineering. Um, so we work closely with customers, especially large and strategic customers. Um, to learn how they use our products, Microsoft Sentinel. know. Um, so from the learning, um, you know, most of the time, you know, customers will have feedbacks, right? They have challenges um, and those learning will often, um, you know, we will bring back to our uh, engineering team and uh, potentially, you know, it might become a feature or, you know, might provide solutions um, to the customer. So I'm, I'm based in Sydney. Um, so yeah, nice meeting you, uh, Andre, and thanks for meeting me. Yeah, thanks for joining, Jeremy. Um, and I understand you uh, you put out a great blog post about a workbook that talks a little bit about how to optimize your Sentinel operations. So signals uh, that help you understand how you are consuming, ingesting data, understanding the security value of some of these uh, signals and how you can utilize some of that. So yeah, thank you for sharing the screen. We can perhaps have a look at that. Yeah, so as you mentioned, um, I did publish a blog post about this workbook. Um, uh, I think it was just a few months ago. Um, the idea come from, uh, again, is feedback from customer. Hey, yeah. um, how do I uh, optimize my existing Sentinel environment, right? But before you could start optimizing, you need to know the, your signals, your your data, right? You need to get those insights, um, uh, get an overview of your environment. And to be honest, today there are many workbooks which will help you to do that, right? Um, yeah. So there are there are there are many workbooks in that we provide out of the box. Um, but again, uh, another feedback from customer is, hey, I need to go to different uh, separate workbooks in order to achieve the goal, right? Can I have just one single book, book to rule them all, right? Give me a, the, the overview. So that's um, that's the, uh, the the where the idea came from, um, and and of course uh, myself and a uh, few of my colleagues uh, started working on that uh, uh, this year, um, and and yeah, and and then we have this optimization book books um, for for those who are new to this, you can find it in the content hub, right? Just go to content hub and search for optimization workbook and you'll find this uh, solutions and you can just proceed to, to install this. Yeah. Um, so have you, let me ask you a question. Have you tried it and used it before? I, I have set up in my tenant, but I don't have a lot of data to test it on. So. <laughs> well, at, at least uh, you have used it and perhaps you could uh, let me know later what, what do you think about this sure. workbook. Um, but in a nutshell, I just want to show you, um, this is how it, it looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, first of all, um, it has three pillars. Um, so, um, we categorize all these insights into these three pillars. The first one, I think is the main one, which is cost and ingestion optimizations, um, followed by operational optimizations. Um, that's where you get the, uh, the metrics on your, uh, mean time to acknowledge, mean time to resolve, right? All those metrics and how many um let's say incidents in high and low and uh, you know if you have automations right what's yeah. the um, mttr with or without automations and then we also have this management and accelerations basically uh just to give you a visibility uh, let's say for example how many automation rules you have how many pi indicator how many rules are active and how many rules are failed for example so as you could see um the top part over here right you have all these tiles it will give you a quick overview, right? Including what's your uh, ingestion size, your pricing. Um, and as you all know, um, first of all, Sentinel, right? Is built via injections, right? Secondly is retention, right? So you get all this information over here. Um, but on the other hand, there are also some other, um, I would say, uh, 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 the dependency um, uh, components that will impact or, or influence the cost. For example, there is a um, 
archive retentions that we have and in order to access the data you could either perform a search job or yeah. do a restore right um and let's say for example a customer perform a restoration and keep it active for a long time right even though not using it so there is a cost associated with it right because uh, the cost is calculated based on size and on the day that it, it, it become active so you can see that we have those um, metrics over here to give you a quick overview um, so the top section is basically just a overview but if you want to drill down and find more details um, you could scroll down and each and every uh, tiles that you see there will be a sections um, associated to it um, so for example I mentioned about active restoration earlier right if I just expand that um, I get to see um, you know uh, hope that you can see that I have one active restore table right um, has been <laughs> active for 653 <laughs> days that's no good right so I have to maybe yeah. delete that um, and apart from that you notice that on the right hand side we have um, what we call um, insight or descriptions now most of the time um, in the workbook we provide metrics uh, we provide charge right table dashboard um, and the customer will need to interpret right those uh, metrics and understand uh, what that means right so we want to make sure that the information the charts that we provide to the customer will be um, you know aligned to what we want to you know we want to uh, uh, present so that's why we have this right hand side we have the description um, and the description usually will have documentations linked to documentations and even some shortcuts for example for this instance uh, you can just click on the shortcut and bring you to the, um, the restoration page for you to delete the restoration. So it's the same um, experience. So if I click on another section, for example, top ingestion, you can see that it's the same experience, the same format, the same layout. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So within the top ingestions, for example, uh, mm -hmm. you, you can get, I can see the ingestion price set in there. Uh, so right. if you... If you know your tier, your ingestion tier, you can enter it and it'll help you calculate what's your average cost per, exactly. Uh, exactly. per day. Right? So that is, that's optional, as you can see. So if let's say you want to know um, the cost in dollar value, um, so just grab your, your your price, for example, maybe you're on a commitment tier, just grab that price and you yeah. know, put, put it there and you calculate. Yeah, amazing, yeah. Do you, do you see uh, customers using this to also look at the security usage and some analytics um, rules that are enabled per table, for example? Yeah, so um, so we have customers, so most of the customers, by the way, they will have their own security use case first yes. before they create rules, right? Most of the time, um, they will First of all, identify the use case and then determine what are the log sources they need to bring in. And third, create additional um, uh, detection rules on, on top of it, right? So yeah. that's usually what most customers would do. Um, so once that's done, obviously they will come here and check, hey, what's the usage of the table, right? Um, yes. for, for collections. And secondly, um, I've showed you about the um, this Taylor over here, management. So this will actually show you um, how many rules you have, how many rules which might have failed in the past. Because um, to be honest, some customer they create rules and then they just leave it run. They might not yes. revisit, right? Just leave it run for some time. Um, so we have this Sentinel Health table. Um, by the way, I should have pointed out. So I mentioned this in my blog, as you can see in this um, in the Content Hub, the required data types. Uh, Sentinel Health and Sentinel Audit, so you can enable them. Yep. Um, Sentinel Health is actually a non-viewable data type, that means it's free. Um, but Sentinel Audit is a viewable data type, uh, but the volume will not be high because it just, uh, right now, Sentinel Audit will keep track of the um, any changes uh, on analytics rule. So um, the volume shouldn't be high because you shouldn't be changing it frequently, right? Um, but all these are being captured here, as you can see the status of the rule um, and, you know, you give you a visibility, hey, for those rules, how many are mapped to specific, you know, my tactics. So this will give you a quick overview, right? Um, of course, in Sentinel, we have the miter blade. Um, yes. But as I said, the, 
the main purpose of this workbook is to give you a single pane of glass, right, of everything. So you will also get the visibility here. Um, and if I scroll down further, um, the number of active blue I have in my environment, right? Uh, this gives you a quick overview as well. Um, and the analytics rule runs um, in the last really? 30 days. So if I see that there's maybe there are certain rules that I need to drill down further, I can click on that. And after that, you provide me with uh, additional information, right? So I can just drill down, I can do a search. And on the right-hand side, as I mentioned, um, we have you know info, additional information. So this describes hey, how you should leverage the information on the left-hand side, right? So I mentioned about my dear courage, rule health, um, and, and many more features that some customers might not be aware of. For example, execution management is considered a new feature that we allow customers to rerun Alex rule because I, we, I can see that I have some rules uh, which uh, have some um, failure in terms of execution, right? Um, and then what I can do is I can leverage the rerun feature to rerun the rule on specific interval. Um, and of course, we have these shortcuts over here that bring you directly to the analytics plate or the MITRE plates. Yeah, oh, that's, I, yeah, I myself uh, can see a lot of value just by looking at this page right there. And I can mm -hmm. see as you scroll down, you have mm -hmm. yeah, playbooks, workbooks, watch lists. Yeah, yeah. everything so, that you see on the high level overview, we have a section for it. Yes. And yeah, and there's too many, we won't have time to drill down each and every one. The yes. main idea is to create awareness. You know, this workbook exists and just play around it, just explain, explore it and and, and yeah. hopefully it will bring value to your organization. Absolutely. Look, I appreciate this very high level overview uh, and your time, Jeremy. Uh, I will link up uh, the documentation in the description of the video as well for people to reference. Thank you. And of course, if you yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment. Uh, but Jeremy, any, any last back? words? Yeah, yeah, we appreciate feedback because um, we we do have um, you know a uh, plan to maybe uh, release a, a V2, right? But we want to know what's missing, right? We want to know what are the additional telemetries or metrics that customer would like to see, right? So yeah. uh, please put your uh, feedback uh, in the comments, right? Like what you said, uh, would would like to get those feedback and uh, so that we can plan further uh, for the next version. Keen to hear your feedback as well. Uh, hopefully people get to use it as much as I'm going to use it. <laughs> Thank thanks you. so much for your time, Jeremy. All yeah. right, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Okay.